Ah yes, my Killer Crawler. This is the Killer Crawler 2 from RC Four Wheel Drive. A one quarter scale machine, they call it. And it is upside down, if you can see that right now. One of the common issues we've had with this machine are these giant motors. Now, I overpowered this whole axle by adding these DeWalt motors. These are the biggest brush motors I could get at the time. So when I put these in, it sticks out quite far, which causes a hang up point right here. Now, the first front axle is identical to the back axle over here. Now, you guys can't really get the scale of this machine unless you have one. John, how heavy do you think this machine is? That's gotta be 40 pounds. Yeah, 40 pounds easily. These tires and the frame, all of the suspension, the battery, all the metal, all these axles are pure metal. So super heavy duty. So with all that weight, that's why I upgraded these motors right out of the gate. Even aluminum rims on these giant tires. These are jumbo Kongs underneath and these are way bigger. Okay, so what we need to do is to build a skid plate. Now, I upgraded the skid plate on my Polaris Razor. I've got an XP4 1000, uh, and when I put on a different skid plate, it was much thicker, and then this one became kind of obsolete. So it's been hanging around, because you always want to have scraps of things hanging around for when you need to fabricate things. And this is going to be a perfect skid plate uh, for uh, the, the motors, right? Because this can come out from the existing metal plate that's on the axle, and then bend around the wire issue. See, John here is doing a template right now out of cardboard, ensuring that we know exactly where we're gonna be able to cut and how it needs to be fitted. And look at that, experienced hands at work. One of the issues we've been having is this wire right here keeps getting hung up on the rock and or breaking off, which is no good because this is a huge axle for just one motor to be driving, right? So with both of these, a skid plate in place, we can do one, two, and we figured we'd film it to kind of show you and give you ideas on how easy something like this can be. All you need to do is have a little bit of creativity, a few tools at your disposal, and uh, a little bit of patience and perseverance. Let's get started. Look at that. Oh, that pit fits perfectly. Yeah, I like that side much better. Let's move that ahead a little bit. This is why you do a template, because this shows you that we wouldn't have needed the other side like I thought. Dremel and the grinder and extension cords. <laughs> Right tools for the right job. We need the table so we have something sturdy to put it on while we're cutting it. So glasses, a zip cut. I'm gonna use the zip cut for the big cuts on here. Gonna use a Dremel to kinda of get out the small cuts when we need it. You ready? Yeah, I'm out of the way. Now that's the beauty about what we're using today is that because both axles are the same on the Killer Crawler 2, both sides of the skid plate are the same, so we have identical pieces on each side. So that'll work out to our advantage today. Next on Does It Fit? <laughs> oh baby, look at that. Motor now protected. And it's got a gnarly skid plate. Pretty gnarly, man. So what, a couple of bolts in right here, here, I would think, hey, yeah. Uh...
Okay, John's done with the grinding. Let's have a look. Beauty, man. <laughs> Let's see this corner over here. It's rounded out. Looks perfect. So I got the other one cut out. Uh, shall we do the same thing, grind her down? Yeah, you betcha. Nice. All right, so both skid plates are being dry fit right now. Both of them have been onto the grinder. What we're thinking is that there are two screws on either side here. We can maybe use these ones if there is enough length or maybe just add a longer screw. That bypasses the issue of the, the servo being there. What do you think, a couple of washers maybe? I don't know, hey? They might get caught up as well. Good job on this side as well. Not too bad, I cut it a little wide, but looks that's good. That's okay. Mm -hmm. We can countersink them too. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. Something we hadn't anticipated is we just drilled the holes and as you screw them in, this uh, skid plate actually has a bit of stretch to it, so it kind of countersunk itself. I could have had them keep going and made it flush, but I don't want to. I want to make sure that we got a good uh, shelf underneath that screw head. Same with it here. We'll add another button. So we'll have two that barely stick out, but this high center area, this is the one that's going to be the highest over overall. So really, this isn't going to be a problem on the skid plate. Check that out. It's so strong too. So people may be wondering how these would be getting marked out if they're already attached to the axle. How is it getting the right mark on the opposite side of the skid plate? The trick is simple, my friends. One torch. Skid plate underneath, look at this. That's how we should have mounted it, dude, was underneath. <laughs> Servos in the way. Oh, that's right. Up. That's right. You can get her where you want her. Lots of yeah. space. Heating up a hook. Doing a few puncture marks. You only want to do it once. Yep. Rock climber are you if you don't even cut your lugs right. <laughs> Hi, Ev. Hey. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you look fine. You look fine. It's hot, it's hot on the prairies <laughs> today, man. I am a sweaty mess. Yeah. You've been helping me out today. Have I? Every, well, yeah. Moral you, support. John. Again, as always. Helping out. Not at all. <laughs> We've got upcoming series on, uh, on uh, oh, look at larges right there. There's uh, your truck over there, Mr. Car behind it, yeah. Mr. Cartwheel, and of course, Mr. Cart yeah, yeah, eight, eight cartwheels that did down that hill one poop day. Truck. That was my other truck, but yeah, same that, body, same body as as the poop truck, different truck underneath. Different truck. This one doesn't go off bashing. This is off your the race track. truck. That's race truck. Why do you have one tire that's a gray tire? Because why not? We'll see. No, they're all gray. There's one black and orange. Oh, one black and orange. Yeah, Be because people ask about it. That's why. I don't know. I'm just always. How I am. And I have a new engine in large. Uh, large is going to be ripping around with a Zenoa 32 in it. Yeah. Silenced pipe. But you know, we're not here about larges today, right? No. Killer Crawler and John Skid Plates here that we're working on. Almost done. Is that the trade name now? Yeah. It's John Skid Plates? John's Killer Crawler yeah. Skid Plates. Uh, .com or <laughs> JKS? JKS. <laughs> nice. Uh, looking good though, almost done. Uh, get her going and we're gonna have some good old motor protection. Go Surprised they didn't design this uh, with uh, one-fifth scale servos, brother. I, I was actually really surprised at that too. Yeah, two eight scale servos that work together to turn these giant tires. I would think if we, you can't even redesign the plate really just the way it's already been done and cut. Um, but I, I, I still may investigate doing that in the future. Get a flat piece of aluminum, maybe we can make a bracket. Yeah, with a fifth scale, I'd sure like something heavy duty in there. So lots of times actually in fifth scale, people ask, why don't you use a regular standard size servo? You know, yes. can I replace it with a standard size? I see the torque specs, but it's the internal components. You're talking oh, about yeah, the they're smaller, the bigger splines. Oh yeah. Everything about it's a little beefier, right? Yeah. So for something like this, because Looking at this, you can't really tell when you see it driving oh. and in film. Yeah. But the, the weight it's huge. and the force of yeah. this is so massive. Yeah. The, the, each one of these is yeah. so heavy. Yeah. 
you know, the mass that it's rotating oh, yeah. and turning. These have to be close to 10 pounds. They've got each, each yeah. one of these has to be close. We're estimating it was around 40 pound unit, but overall between 40 and 50 pounds, I'd say is a good estimate of how much it weighs. Um, and that's of course when it doesn't have mud on it. <laughs> yeah, she looks good. Yeah, it does that's look good. There, so. I got it maybe, yeah. There you go. Right on, man. Skid plate galore. Nice protection. Bump that up. Thank you very much. Now we can finally get it back out on the rocks or out in the mud or out playing around. But uh, that's going to be the next video, isn't it? <laughs> Shall we put the body on at least, just not to rare. not to tease them? Loose ones. Those are those are supposed to be loose. Mm. The way they're coming out like that. <laughs> Quick, tighten them up before anyone sees. <laughs> okay, boys, flip her over. See what we got here. <laughs> That's quite a bit of articulation, eh? Crazy. Well, skid plates, they do hang down a little bit, but not too bad comparatively to what we had, just an exposed motor. Now we've got a little bit of flex for that skid plate. It'll bump up against the motor. Motor will be fine and won't be getting caught on the rocks. Best part is, is when we back up, we yeah we can still get it caught but of course now with this lip it'll certainly uh, give it a lot more ability to slide over the rocks and the terrain so uh, Ev do me a favor buddy get me that bronco body over there body pin body pin ba -ba 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 body pin bronco killer crawler welcome back radio thank you